as Gerald Relays, Functional Nutrition Consultant here at the Natural Health Improvement Center of Idaho. And today I want to talk about this important work. Many of us have learned about the term epigenetics. So epigenetics is essentially, I'll paraphrase it, the ability for certain genes to turn on or turn off based on one's lifestyle. So that includes uh, how active you are, what habits you have in your life, whether that is smoking, out, drinking alcohol, drinking caffeine, et cetera. But more importantly, what is your diet? So are you taking in chemical toxins from the environment, heavy metals, chemicals, and are you nourishing your body well enough to support it to eliminate those chemicals? And if not, then those chemicals and heavy metals stay in. Long ago, when I studied genetic testing, and in our office, we actually do conduct genetic testing, we found, I found that speaking to some of these researchers, that every drug is tested to find out which genes it has the ability to cause a genetic variation, whether it's heterozygous or homozygous. So we know that certain chemicals can actually influence genetic expression. And not only that, there are genes that are, that are connected to actual nutrients. So certain nutrients are needed to actually activate genes that help us prevent illness or help us to reverse the symptoms of various illnesses. And then there are certain foods or non-food substances, synthetic foods, processed foods, foods with chemicals, GMOs that may alter that. Now, a lot of this is unknown. However, there is enough data to know that certain chemicals in our environment can negatively uh, influence the expression of our genes. And this is known as more broadly, the field of epigenetics. And so today I actually wanna talk about this book. This book here is called Pottinger's Cats. Now, Dr. Francis Pottinger Jr. was a medical doctor in the early 1920s, 30s, 40s, and, and so on. And he actually wanted to conduct specific research on cats to find out what was the specific dose of a steroid or a hydrocortisone or prednisone that they would need in the event that they had an adrenalectomy. So we had the adrenals removed and we want to find out what is the proper dose. So then we can figure out if someone's adrenal glands were not functioning properly, what dose of a particular medication could help this animal still continue to live within the daily existence. And so, um, so he actually then started conducting these adrenalectomies among these cats and noticed that half of his cats would actually die before he could actually conduct his experiment to find out what dose of prednisone that they needed. And so he started also noticing that half of his other cats remained alive. And now he started digging into the question as to why. Why were certain cats capable of living longer after the adrenal glands were removed, while others did not live long enough for him to actually conduct his experiment? And so he then started to look at what these two groups were of cats were eating. And he noticed that the first group of cats that died before he can conduct the experiment were consuming cooked foods, pasteurized milk. And this other group of cats were drinking raw milk as well as raw organ meats. So there was a local butcher and because they didn't have enough funding to generate or acquire enough food for all the cats, they went to the local butchery and the butcher was giving them the organ meats um, very inexpensively. And then these cats were consuming them and consuming them raw. And so then he started asking the question, is, does nutrition have to do with the health of an animal, specifically the cats? And so he started to conduct these experiments. This has actually then led him to a new career of understanding nutrition. And I'm going to show you an actual slide here that I present to many of the practitioners that I lecture to across the country. This is coming from a seminar called Nutritional Solutions for a Pharmaceutical World. And this slide summarizes his work. Now, it's not exactly uh, going to go into all the details of his clinical studies. And I highly recommend you get this book, Pottinger's Cats. You can have the image over here. You can see it's authored by Dr. Francis Pottinger Jr. And he, in general, we can talk about, he conducted many control groups, and then he had many experimental groups. And the general gist is that he had groups of cats consuming raw meat as well as raw milk. Okay. Now, some of them also had cod liver oil. Some of them had various supplementation of vitamin D. And then he had other groups of cats where they consume a variety of cooked meat, cooked meat, pasteurized milk, even condensed milk. And in general, he saw that for those kittens or those cats that consumed foods that were cooked or denatured or heated or had nutrients removed or destroyed, 
they generally start to develop their own systemic health problems. And there's actual documentary, document, uh, documentaries. So there's a website here. You can go online. You can look at these videos. You can find them. And you want to observe his studies because you can clearly see that from one generation to the next that the health status decline as they consume more of the cooked foods, pasteurized foods, foods that have been refined. And then eventually by third generation, they became infertile. So infertility was a huge issue for this group. And then he did a, uh, a, a nice experiment to reintroduce the foods that were native to the animals. And, and that was raw meats, raw milk. And he noticed that they started to regenerate and overall systemically their health improved and their fertility improved. And it took four generations for them to reach the sta same state of health as the initial starting group. So it took them three generations to get to a state of being infertile. And then it took them four generations to restore the health. Okay. Now, of course, over here, he observed in the group that consumed raw meat and raw milk that they had consistently healthy kittens healthy litters all throughout each of the three generations. And there was really no need to reintroduce the raw meat, raw milk, because they were already consuming that. And we talk about among myself and my colleagues that currently we're seeing a lot of this phenomena of what is known as third generation potager's cats. Um, for example, infertility is on the rise. And a lot of that could be due to the consumption of processed foods. There's also a lot of endocrine disruptors in our environment. So a lot of chemicals are known to create hormonal imbalances. Uh, we know that there's a lot of individuals taking oral contraceptives and those can create irregularities within one's fertility. And so we're seeing many compounding uh, issues or root causes that are now affecting the modern day population. And so when individuals come in to our clinic, we definitely address the generational, poor, uh, generational malnutrition. We also address the toxicity that one may be, have been exposed to over the years. Okay, so that's something we do. This is the original epigenetic study. And before, actually even before, the, the term epigenetics was ever coined. Now, when I attended Berkeley, I was there and I studied from, you know, Bruce Ames's research in terms of genetics and, you know, decoding the human DNA. And there's a lot of fascinating information we can get from that. But at the same time, if we just look at the very basics of how we're eating and what we're eating, we can restore our own vitality. We can restore our own fertility. We can actually then pass these good habits onto our children and then our children's children and eventually our great, great grandchildren, right? And so a lot of actual modern research on epigenetics is now showing that the lifestyle we live today, the diet we consume today and the, the thoughts and the mindset we carry on and we pass on to the next generations has the ability to actually influence the next 14 generations. So take it upon yourself to first work on yourself to improve your health so you can, you can feel healthy and happy. And just know that whatever work you're doing for yourself will benefit the generations afterwards. So um, you can be a little selfish, focus on yourself first. And then if you have children or great-grandchildren, grandchildren, just know that when you're focusing on yourself, you're also setting the example for others to come. So anyways, this is Gerald Rulies. I just want to highlight this. This is phenomenal work, just pivotal to understanding how the influence of food and good nutrition can not only impact your health, but the health of multiple generations thereafter. I hope that all of you are healthy and happy. And if not, if you have any questions, come visit me at nhicidaho.com.